Hi, I'm Tom Hackett, and today's subject is the need for electrical thermal co-simulation. Well, that's an unusual topic for Cadence, so what is this all about? Well, when you look at the advances in SOC design today, we find that there have been a lot of strides made on the packaging of SOCs to make our devices smaller and smaller and smaller. And I've got a representation here in this diagram. Uh, forget about all the colored lines for a second. Imagine that this set of rank rectangles on top of each other is a 3D IC stack up where we, have, where we have the silicon chips one on top of the other, like a logic SOC maybe and then memory chips uh, attached onto it. This would be on some kind of a substrate or module or PC board. And then next to it over here, we'll have another chip that's inside a physical package. So we have this kind of a complex 3D setup. And um, what we find is that it's important to understand what temperature each of these different chips is operating at in order for their electrical performance to be right. So we have to do an analysis of uh, the heat flow out of the chips, what temperature does that create, and then how does that impact the electrical performance of the chip. So that's where we're getting into this electrical thermal co-simulation. Now, there's uh, maybe a very simplistic way of doing this, is to say, let's say on this chip right here, that it dissipates two watts and it's perfectly evenly distributed across that silicon. And the next one down here distributes, say, three watts and it's perfectly distributed, so forth and so on. Now, if we did that, we could analyze the heat flow down through this structure across the printed circuit board and take into account the heat coming out of this chip as well and then calculate temperatures. So the thing is, though, that that would not be accurate because it doesn't, that's not the way chips work. It's their, their heat is, is generated um, non-uniformly across the surface. So how do we get that info? Well, what we do is we link into our Voltus power grid analysis tool to get a very accurate depiction of the power being generated across the surface of a chip, the, the heat flow coming out of it. And then our Celsius tool takes that and analyzes it using finite element analysis methods to get a very accurate depiction of the heat flow and a resulting temperature map across the chip. But we don't stop there because we just said that the electrical performance is influenced by the temperature and we didn't really know what the true temperature was to after we ran this simulation. So we have to go back to Voltus and rerun our analysis with the true operating temperatures and then we have a complete solution. And what I've drawn here, our Celsius tool will plot out thermal maps showing you the thermal temperatures, the gradients uh, across a structure like this. And so that's one part of the problem. Uh, another part of the problem is that the chips, say like in our cell phone, they're just not always on or off. They have different power modes. It might be full on, it might be low power, standby, sleep, and all of these dissipate different amounts of power and therefore generate different amounts of heat, and so therefore the temperature profile is different. Well, one way that uh, tools deal with this is to just say, okay, let's say it's just on, and we'll run the analysis, or just low power, and we run the analysis, and this would be called a static analysis. And the way things operate today, that really just doesn't cut it, because you can get unusual power spikes as you switch from one mode to the next, and that's what our combined solution of Voltus and Celsius will analyze for. It'll actually do dynamic uh, power analysis, dynamic temperature analysis, so you get the true operating temperatures for all your components across your assembly. And as if that wasn't enough to deal with, we realize that many times, like in a laptop, you might have an enclosure with a fan where you have airflow coming across uh, the unit. And well, guess what? Celsius takes that into account also. So with Celsius, you can do a very, very accurate simulation of your design. Now, how is this different maybe than what other tools have been able to do in the past? Well, the difference is that other tools could only handle small chunks of the design. They couldn't do the whole thing. Or maybe they would only do a static analysis instead of a dynamic analysis to try to simplify the problem. 
But with Celsius, because of its unique architecture, it's able to run up to 10 times faster than other tools and use about 10 times less memory than other tools. So you can do more of the simulation, really all of the simulation in one go. And not only does that apply to sort of small scale systems, it applies to large scale systems that you might want to model as well. So it's a very flexible tool. So that's a little introduction to electrothermal co-simulation and how we use Celsius and Voltus together to make it happen. So thanks for watching and for Whiteboard Wednesday, I'm Tom Hackett.